Hi guys, this is Miss Carson. Uh, I am going to continue our first chapter Friday with another Young Adult Book Award nominee. It's called The Silence Between Us by Allison Gervais. Um, this, is, this book has actually um, received the Junior Library Guild Gold Standard Award. Um, so I'm going to read the front cover and then go ahead and start with chapter one. Maya could only imagine one thing worse than moving halfway across the country to Colorado right before the start of her senior year in high school, leaving behind Pratt School for the Deaf, where she's been a student for years, to attend Engelman, a hearing school. But then there's Bo Watson, Engelman's student body president and overachiever. Maya suspects Bo's got a hidden agenda when he starts learning sign language to converse with her, but she also can't deny it's nice to sign again with someone in school in a school otherwise filled with hearing teachers and classmates deaf and hearing relationships never work maya keeps telling herself yet she can't help but be drawn to Bo. but when maya says she doesn't want to receive a cochlear implant and Bo doesn't understand why she wouldn't want to hear again maya wonders if Bo wants her to be someone she is not. With her mind in the world of the deaf, but her heart in the world of the hearing, Maya has to figure out whether bridging the gap is worth it or if staying her, true to herself matters more. So I am going to start with chapter one. I hadn't set foot inside a hearing school in almost five years. And yet, here, in, here, Mom and I were, sitting in our minivan in the parking lot of Engelman High School, a hearing school. We'd been waiting about 15 minutes, and not once had my heart stopped pounding out a painful rhythm in my chest. Mom reached over and tapped my knee, and I looked up from my lap where I'd been picking a loose thread on my tie-dye t-shirt. She signed, Ready? I felt myself exhaling heavily. I was most certainly not ready, but it wasn't like I had much of a choice. Hearing school was definitely not my idea, but when the closest school for the deaf, being over an hour away from our new home in Park, Colorado, we weren't left with many options. Ready, I signed, wait, not help me. Yet again, I found myself glad that American Sign Language was my preferred method of communication. It was short, sweet, to the point, and nowhere near as formal as English. I doubted I would have been able to string together any one sentence that would make an ounce of sense in English right now. Mom gave an overly bright smile as she unfastened her seatbelt and opened the car door. Don't worry. I saw her sign as I unbuckled my own seatbelt. It was kind of hard not to worry when I knew I was about to become the weird new girl with the interpreter following around all day. Talk about making an impression. I never had to worry about an interpreter before because at the Pratt School for the Deaf, the school I'd gone to back in Jersey, 90% of the staff were deaf or hard of hearing and those that weren't knew ASL and could communicate effectively. At Engelman High, I was going to be the one and only deaf student, an honor I wasn't so sure I was ready to accept. I grabbed my backpack and hoisted it up on my shoulder as Mom locked the car, and we began the slow walk towards my certain doom. Okay, so maybe that was a bit dramatic, but the last time I'd gone to a hearing school, I'd actually been, you know, hearing. I'd gone to Pratt for so long and gotten used to being around deaf or hard of hearing people, people who spoke my language, and now I was going to have to resort to lip reading and struggling to follow basic conversation. But then there was the matter of using my own voice, which had me all but paralyzed with fear. I was oral because I'd lost my hearing long after I'd acquired basic language skills, but the issue was that I couldn't hear my own voice anymore. 
Using my voice was sometimes a knee-jerk reaction when I was around people who didn't sign, like the home health care nurses that used to come over a few times a week back in Jersey to help take care of Connor while mom was busy working as an associate for a company that specializes in harnessing wind energy. Even though there was nothing wrong with my voice, I hoped, using it was just downright weird. I couldn't hear myself speak, but I could feel the sound reverberating in my skull whenever I spoke. It was a sensation I wasn't all that fond of. Last Friday, Mom and I met with my new teachers, the principal and the interpreter the school district arranged to accompany to all my classes this year. And today, my interpreter would be the one introducing me to people, communicating with, and voicing for me with my teachers, and was a surefire way to end up a social outcast by the final bell. The interpreter's name was Kathleen. She seemed nice enough, but she obviously enjoyed interpreting given how much she put into it, a big part of sign language to begin with. No matter how nice she was, though, she was still a stranger. Mom put her hand on my shoulder as we approached the main entrance of the school and signed, Breathe, you fine here. I struggled, biting my lower lip. There was no point in correcting her. Plus, my palms were starting to sweat because I was so nervous and signing with sweaty palms was never fun. Kathleen, nice, right? Mom signed before she held open the door for me. I know you will like her. Fine, I signed back, not wanting to press the issue. I hated fingerspelling long names. I made a mental note to ask Kathleen what her sign name was. Sign names were typically representative of the individual, so I bet Kathleen's sign had something to do with her flyaway red hair. My sign name was technically the sign for sweet, because apparently the deaf teacher who taught my first ASL class thought I was sweet when she gave it to me. I didn't think that applied much anymore. My given name, Maya, was a much better fit. But, Mom pressed, but hearing school, I signed, making a sweeping gesture around the school's lobby we were now standing in. Rows of faded red lockers lined the hallway on their side of the entrance. Straight ahead was the main office. A huge clock bolted to the wall above the door, displaying the time 7.15, almost half an hour before school started. Not all hearing school was bad. Mom signed, giving me an earnest look. I think you will like school here. My new interpreter, Kathleen, came walking out of the main office to greet us. Her mess of red curls pulled up in a bun. She signed, good morning, with a perky smile. I wasn't going to bother with the response, but I saw Mom's stern scowl out of the corner of my eye. So I forced myself to sign back, good morning. Excited? Kathleen asked me, first day, new school? I shrugged, sure. Dr. R-I-V-E-R-A Rivera waited for us. Kathleen signed, fingerspelling the principal's name, and she gestured behind her to the main office. Your schedule ready. Wonderful, I signed. Though I wasn't sure if the expression on my face was as sarcastic as I wanted. Kathleen not do something wrong. Mom signed as we followed after Kathleen. Nice, she added in a nonverbal threat, pointing a finger at me. Always nice, I signed to Mom, resting my hand on my chest and batting my eyelashes. <clears throat> Mom rolled her eyes and I knew she was giving one of her world-weary sighs by the way her shoulders slumped. I officially lost my hearing when I was 13, four years ago, but I still remember what some things sound like, and Mom's dramatic sighs were firmly ingrained in my memory. The school secretary was seated behind a massive desk just inside the office, and she nodded to Kathleen when we walked in. 
I watched her say good morning as Kathleen pulled open the door that led into the inner part of the main office where the principal, Dr. Rivera, other administrators, and the nurse worked. Dr. Rivera's office was small and dimly lit with the blinds pulled down, which had made lip reading difficult when we met last Friday. I had an interpreter with me, sure, but at the same time, I wanted to at least appear like I could understand what was being said. I wasn't incompetent. Dr. Rivera was standing behind his desk when the three of us had entered. This time, the bright overhead lights were on. The small accent light on his desk turned off. Standing beside the one window in the room, arms crossed and looking just as uncomfortable as I felt, was a girl with a high ponytail wearing a classy, dressy skirt and blouse. I froze in the doorway. Had Engelman assigned me a second interpreter? Or was this girl fresh out of the Terp school? Had to shadow Kathleen and add to my already awkward entourage? Two interpreter? I signed frantically at mom. Don't need two interpreter. Before my mom could reply, Kathleen jumped into the conversation, signing no interpreter pointing to the girl by the window. The girl was wearing stylish square rimmed glasses, but I could see her dark eyes flicking over to the door like she wanted to make a break for it, but was forcing herself to stay put. You and me both, girlfriend, I thought. Her name, N-I-N-A-T-O-R-R-E-S, Nina Torres. Kathleen fingers spelled it, still pointing to the girl. Nina clearly didn't know a lick of sign language, but she sure knew we were talking about her with all the pointing we were doing. Don't understand, I signed to Mom and Kathleen. Who's she? Why is she here? Dr. Rivera was talking quickly now, picking up on the tense atmosphere, but I couldn't think of lip reading at that moment. I wanted to know what this girl Nina was doing here. Kathleen brushed her fingers up along her forearm, the sign for slow, and Dr. Rivera paused, pink in the face. He probably never dealt with a deaf kid, like everyone else in the school, I was willing to bet, and I could tell he wasn't quite sure what to do. Nina, wonderful student, Kathleen was signing as Dr. Rivera gestured to Nina, who still looked beyond embarrassed with her cheeks of blazing red. We asked her to be your peer mentor for your first two weeks here. Don't understand, I signed in confusion, shaking my head. Dr. Rivera waved his hands around like he was giving some dramatic Shakespearean monologue as he explained what a peer mentor was. I only caught a few words of what he was saying, like great student and grades and something about student council. He hadn't really seemed to pick up on the whole you need to slow down as the deaf kid can't understand a thing you say thing. Nina, show you your classes, Kathleen explained to me. Walk you around school. Make sure you have good time. I should have seen this coming. She my babysitter? I sighed, jabbing a finger at Nina. Walk me around. Have hearing kids make Friend with the new deaf girl? Mom was pursing her lips, looking uncomfortable, while Kathleen relayed what I said to Dr. Rivera and Nina. I watched Nina's face fall as she listened to Kathleen, and I felt a momentary twinge of guilt. I wanted to get used to the idea of being in a hearing school again at my own pace. Not just be thrown to the wolves and expected to make new friends with the first hearing kid to cross my path. Not like that, Kathleen interpreted as Nina started to speak. We want you to enjoy Engelman. Impossible, I signed back immediately. I saw mom give another one of those sighs and scrunch her eyes closed. She took a moment to collect herself and signed to me, work with her. I know you're not happy, but try, please. It was the expression on her face that ultimately made me back down. She looked so tired and worn down, and I knew it was partially because of me. 
I hadn't made things easy on her since she announced we were moving. I knew she was doing everything she could to make a good life for us out here. And she had enough to worry about with my little brother, Connor. When you have a son with cystic fibrosis, somehow your deaf teenager ends up being the less difficult one. Maybe not so much attitude-wise, though. Okay, I signed, reaching over to squeeze her forearm. Sorry. Okay, she said, wob a wobbly smile on her lips. We sat in the two chairs in front of Dr. Rivera's desk as he sat down again, looking relieved the storm had passed. Kathleen beckoned Nina closer before moving behind Dr. Rivera's desk, standing directly in my line of sight to interpret. It was pretty much the last thing in the world I wanted to be doing, but some, but probably the sooner I accepted this whole new hearing thing as my new normal, the better off I might be. Um, sounds pretty interesting. Um, a little, uh, tidbit of information about me is, uh, I used to, um, when I initially went to college, I went for deaf education. So I took a few years of sign language. Uh, and one of the things I thought was interesting was that they talked about how, um, a deaf person, um, needs to assign you your sign name. Um, so my sign name is Jenna, J-E-N-N-A, but it's right here by my smile because I always have a pretty big smile. So a little tidbit about me. Um, this seems like a pretty good one since I am interested in sign language um, and the deaf culture. I'm very excited about the book, so I will definitely finish this one. Um, I hope you all are doing well. I know a lot of information is coming out as far as uh, senior drop-off. Um, as far as materials and things go, I know that underclassmen information will be coming out soon for when y'all's dates are. Um, and I know we're all trying to finish up with last minute things for the semester. If there is anything that I can do, please reach out. I'll be happy to email you um, and see if I can help in any way. I hope you all are doing well. Um, make sure to get outside and enjoy that sunshine. We've had some nice weather these last couple of days, so... Um, Hope you all are enjoying yourself, um, getting a little bit of fun in there mixed in with some of your schoolwork. Uh, again, reach out if you need it. Otherwise, hope you have a good day. Thanks, guys.